Okay, I think we're live, you guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so we already have one comment. Who's commenting? Woohoo! Hi, Anne Marie. Okay, everybody's coming on. Good, good, good. Turn my volume down. As you can tell, we have some amazingness in our presence tonight. I am so excited. I'm all sweaty because technology wasn't working and I got all flustered. You know how that goes. <laughs> um, but I am super, super excited to introduce Miss Colette Ganell, one of the co-founders of Sensi. She's going to share some time with us tonight. Sit around the fire. Let's enjoy the story. Ask your questions. I'll be watching for your comments so that I can share them with Colette as well and we can interact tonight. Um, but I'm not going to take any more time, Colette. I would, I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to give you the floor. <laughs> You're so awesome. Well, I am seriously so honored to be able to come on with each of you. And Edie, Edie is amazing. Seriously, one of my greatest heroes in Sensi. And this is truly an honor. And she was telling me that you guys are her amazing leaders and that this is a dash to director group, which I'm so proud of you. Like, congratulations. And I know you can do it. I totally believe in you. And I'm super excited for a convention to be in Salt Lake this year, um, which I hope all of you can come so I can give you hugs and celebrate with you. So <laughs> way excited. And thank you so much, Edian, for inviting me. Like, this is just, it makes me feel so happy to be able to come and, and share how Sensi began. It's pretty crazy, the story. So um, I will just start by saying, uh, let me flip to my first screen. So everybody asks, how did you come up with the idea for Sensi? How did Sensi get started? So I um, have five daughters. And one time I um, had a jarred candle that was going in our house. And I left and ran some errands. And when I came back, it had burned all the way down. And thank heavens, it didn't break the glass or it didn't start a fire. It broke the glass, but the flame went out. But I like had a panic of, oh my goodness, I could have totally burned my house down. And with my little girls, I was like so nervous. So I had investigated and I found that over 20,000 house fires are started each year from burning candles. So I was on a mission to figure out how to do a candle that didn't have flame. <laughs> so I always had the candles going. I loved my house to smell good. And at the same time, my sister-in-law, who is Kara Egan, she's married to my little brother, Troy. Um, and she had been watching the Oprah show and it happened to be the Millionaire Moms episode and it was the moms that had created the baby Einstein videos. And so she's watching these moms and she um, was looking for something that she could do where she could earn extra income and still be home. Because my little brother gets really bad headaches and had some health issues and stuff. So she was like, I really want to be able to earn some extra income. So she's watching Oprah. She's looking at these women on there and she's like, these are just ordinary women. Like if they can think of an idea like this, why can't I think of an idea? So I didn't know any of this, but Kara had been praying for a whole year for some kind of idea of a business that she could do where she could earn some extra income. So we went to lunch. It was on July 25th of 2003. And it was my mom's birthday. And um, at that time, I had been trying these little coffee mug warmers with a jarred candle on it. And I had tried like melting tarts and votives and all these different things. But for my mom's birthday, um, I decided to give her a little coffee mug warmer with a jarred candle as a gift. And so we were there with all my sisters and sister-in-laws. I have a big family. There's like eight kids. And so we were all there at this lunch and Kara was there. And my mom opened up her gift of the little jarred candle. And it got this conversation going. And I told them about my neighbor that I had gone to her house and it smelled really good. And I was like, what are you burning? And she said, oh, my husband won't let me burn candles anymore. I have smoke all over my walls and ceiling. And she said, so I buy a jarred candle. I put it in a bag. 
I break the glass on it. I pull the chunk of wax out. I cut it up in pieces. And then she would warm it in her old little potpourri crock pot looking thing. And literally, I didn't think anything of it when she was telling that. But I mentioned that at this luncheon where we were all sitting and Kara was there. And Kara said that literally the words came in her mind, Kara, this is your business. And so that night she called me and said, you know, if your neighbor will go to all that trouble of breaking the glass and doing all that, she's like, do you want to start a company with me selling wax chunks in warmers and we'll make it easy for people? And of course I was like, heck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so this is a picture of us back, back then when I didn't have wrinkles and I wasn't a grandma, but anyway, so literally we were like, okay, do you have money to start Sensi? No. Do you have money? No. Like, all right, what do we need to do? Well, we need to name it. We need to get a business license. We need to like figure out like what kind of wax works good. Like, what do we do? And I got married at 18. I didn't go to any college. So, you know, I had no background of that. Kara had a little bit of college, but neither of us had business experience of like starting a, a business. I had done some party plan, like where I sold for a few companies, mostly just to get stuff that I wanted, but neither of us had really any clue on how to get started. So we knew we needed to start with the name, but we really did have a huge dream for what Sensi could be. And I'm sure each of you, when you like, I want to be a consultant, you order your starter kit, your kit comes, you're just like so excited and like you dream and you dream big and you can't sleep and you're so excited. That's exactly how we were. We were like, okay, what do we need to do? Like, this is so fun. So this is um, actually one of our very first logos that we had. And um, the name Sensi, so we had uh, been throwing out, we had really like a whole list of different names that we liked and perfect sense, a bit of sense, all these, there was lots of different names. But when we said the word Sensi, Kara was on the computer and pulling up all different forms of the word scent. And she yelled from the other room, what do you think about Sensi? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it because it could go to any other product besides just wax and warmers. So that's how we came up with the name Sensi. <laughs> and I loved it too, just because it's so cute and fun. Um, so then we thought, okay, we um, need to have money. We need to get a business license. So literally to fund opening up Sensi, she opened up a credit card, you know, the little things that come in the mail. And I opened up <laughs> a credit card and that was how we uh, were planning to fund Sensi. So seriously crazy. Um, we also, and you guys maybe have experienced this in your starting of Sensi and how, how you're going along where you have naysayers, right? And people saying, you know, my, my father-in-law said, now Colette, you know, 99% of all new businesses fail. And even my little brother, Troy, he's like, why a candle business? Like, you can buy candles everywhere. They're a dime a dozen, you know, and we had lots of people who doubted us. Right. But um, for me, that was like a huge motivation to say, I'm going to prove them wrong and I'm going to work even harder to make our dreams come true. So that was that was kind of fun. Um, OK, so I love this quote. Um, it says all who have accomplished great things have had a great aim and fixed their gaze on a goal which was high, one which sometimes seemed impossible. And really for us, these two stay-at-home moms, no business experience, really no clue what we were doing to be able to just take an idea and turn it into a company, um, it, it, it didn't seem possible, right? Um, so that's why it's even more awesome because we really did have a high goal and we're like, we can do this. <laughs> so we had the name, we got a business license and we um, went to my fun neighbor who was a designer. Um, she actually created the logos for like Stevens Hot Cocoa and several other big companies, but um, she was super sweet. So this is a makeup bag um, that we had that we loved the, 
colors and and the stripes and the the look of it and that was the inspiration for our colors of scentsy and for the original boxes and and things like that she also helped us create our logo and um, this was one of our original ones as well with the authentic Scentsy product, which now is even more important because we do have people who loved our idea <laughs> and want to um, try to copy, right? So anyway, um, this was super fun and that was how our colors came to be. Um, so this is a picture of one of our original warmers. Um, we started investigating um, different kinds of wax and and how all of all of that would work for melting and we thought we need to find a cute way to warm the wax so be, there was the coffee mug warmers but those got really hot and so we've been searching around and we found these cute um, little warmers that had the little lid on top and we loved it because underneath it had a little clamp where the light bulb would click into the bottom and the light bulb we were like this is an awesome idea because it was warm enough to melt the wax but not hot enough to burn and so we called the the uh, manufacturer of these warmers and said hey we love these warmers we want to get a whole bunch of them and he was like oh you can have all you want of those. He said people used to use them where they would put potpourri and water and let it simmer. And he said, nobody does that anymore. And we just have all these warmers that are sitting there. And we said, awesome. Like, do you care if we package them in our own boxes and, you know, change whatever? And he's like, do whatever you want with them. Like, I would just be happy to, <laughs> to move them. So we were pumped. We like, started ordering and they came in all these cute different colors and we actually changed out the they, they came with a 40 watt bulb which was still pretty hot so we changed those out for a, a 25 watt and we packaged them in our cute uh, little scentsy boxes that had a little belly band that would slide over the top and that was one of our really big things when we started was we wanted everything to be gift ready and to be um, high quality packaging so that it was something that we could be really proud to represent and sell and um, give as gifts and really that's what what spoke to Orville later later when I get to that part <laughs> but um, anyway so yeah we wanted like really high quality packaging. So that is a picture of those. These are some pictures of some of the other colors. And this picture is actually really fun because um, when Orville and Heidi took over, which we'll get to that, um, they took pictures and this was one of the original catalogs where people could just flip. They were just actual pictures that they, they took and then people could flip and see the different colors. So that's kind of a fun one. <laughs> Okay, so for our original Scentsy bars, um, we knew we very first poured them uh, into an ice cube tray. We had a friend who they did like uh, jarred candles, but also like pillar candles and um, things like that. And so we went to them and said, hey, we want you to pour us, you know, the, the wax that's really highly scented. Um, but will you do it an ice cube tray? And she looked at us like we were literally crazy, but she's like, okay. So we got them home. The very first scent that was ever poured was Red Delicious. And sometimes that has come back on Bring Back Bars, which is kind of fun. Um, but when we got them home from the ice cube tray, we're like, oh, these are cool. They melt good, but it doesn't look very professional, not very good. So I went to the... Um, the craft store. And I'm like, all right, we need something that's gonna, you know, be able to hold that little shape and, and uh, be able to look a lot better. So I found little bead organizers. <laughs> and um, we up to this point, we had had tried lots of different like tarts and votives and melting things. And we found that all of the things that were created to be outside of a container so could hold their own shape it's a much harder wax so it didn't hold as much scent so the softer wax that was in a jarred candle we could pack a lot more scent in and so we're like all right we need to be able to have it shape for a little bit 
so it can be the stronger wax, but then um, make it to melt. So we would get these bead organizers full of wax, bring them home. We would like kind of break the seal on them and we sit and bang and bang them out. And once they would come out, we would shrink wrap each individual little bar and label them. And these were the original Scentsy bars. <laughs> so this was our system. We had our warmers, our bead organizers, our logo, and we were ready to go. We were super excited. We had it named. And by this point was October of 2003. So we had the birthday lunch in July, got everything ready, and we were ready to go by October. This is um, a picture of the basement, the unfinished part in my basement at home. So we had, um, and literally I look at this now and go, oh my heck, that was all our warmers. Like probably each of you have more warmers than that <laughs> in your own stock. <laughs> but um, this is actually, you know, how it was. And then we had a little baby gate on this other side of these tables. And our kids had a little um, area where they uh, had their toys and could play while we were working on Scentsy. <laughs> Um, this is, I think I was organizing the testers, which came in these huge glass jars, which when you're packing around all of those testers, super duper heavy, <laughs> but yeah, taking inventory was pretty easy back then because we didn't have a lot. <laughs> um, this was our high-tech labeling system for the bars. Once we, you can see all the empty, um, bead organizers up there in the top. And um, we would take all the empties in big black garbage bags, have them filled up and come back and make them. And then once we um, had them ready, we would put them in these little storage bins where they were ready to roll. And um, you will see in pictures that you see of the ocean container, once Orville and Heidi picked everything up, these, all these bins are still there. They picked up all of our actual um, product from the basement and and took it there. So, all right, we had everything ready, but now we're like, how do we market this? Like, how do we let people know? Because back then a wickless candle, nobody knew what the heck that was. So we put this cute little display um, at, it's called the Quilted Bear here in Salt Lake City. And we had our little warmers and the bars and we were like feeling so professional and everything. And literally, it just sat there. Nobody understood what a wickless candle was. So we were like, all right, we know this needs person to person. Oops, uh, I skipped one person to person um, explanation. So in the back of my mind where I had done a little bit of um, party plan with some other companies, I was like, you know what, this would be awesome party plan company. So we started doing some home parties and this is a picture in my family room, kind of funny. <laughs> I'm like, oh, the hairdo. <laughs> um, and then we realized that actually fairs and shows were really awesome too, because we could meet a lot of people outside of our circle and um, we were able to person to person explain it. So, um, and this picture is, is kind of fun too. We had our little banner. You can see back in the back, the boxes. We had like actual boxes for the bars where the bars were gift boxed. And um, the, the little racks where the warmers are on display are some of my pampered chef that I had <laughs> gotten when I was a consultant doing that. So <laughs> kind of fun. But anyway, this picture um, is actually the show that we did uh, with, with Orville when I met him. So I'll, I'll explain about that. So we are doing um, a, a show and this was March of 2004. So I was telling you, Deanne, so next weekend is the Home and Garden Show. And it's this same show that we met Orville clear back in 2004. And this is what happened. So we had our little booth. I'll, I'll go back to this. We had our little booth all set up and um, it was actually on the end of a, a row. And 
Orville at the time, he had a company called Event Sales, and they would go around to different fairs and shows, and he would have like 10 pitch, you know, people who would come and pitch different products, and they would have like brooms and chamois and mops and different different products in, in each of the um, booths. And um, at the time, and I know you've heard Orville and Heidi's side of the story where they were in a ton of debt and ready to declare bankruptcy because they had gotten a bunch of products to go to the fairs and shows. And then 9-11 happened and people weren't really going to fairs and shows. And anyway, they had a ton of inventory and um, was having a hard time. So Orville had gone up to the show promoter and gave her a check to pay for all the booths. And the, the check, he told her, the check's no good. But if you let me do the show, at the end of the show, I'll come back and buy the check back with cash. And she said, yes. And she said, actually, there's a booth that nobody showed up in. And if you have an extra product, you can throw it into that booth as well. And that booth happened to be the one that was directly across from us on the end of the, the rows where we had our little Scentsy booth. And it was so cute. They had um, basically the plain booth. They just put a table and a TV on it and had these game controllers that I think Orville ran and got out of his, his uh, truck to sell the last minute in this booth that, that was given to them. But he had his cute 14 year old niece that was there and she was just demoing the video game across from us. And if any of you have done any events, you know that you become friends with your little neighbors around you. And so we were watching this game and I was like, oh my heck, my girls would have so much fun with that. <laughs> and so in the back of my mind, I was like, I really want to like talk to them about getting one of those. But at that time, we had $20,000 on our credit cards <laughs> from starting Sensi. So our cute friend who did our logo, she did an awesome job and we thought it was going to be about $2,000. And when we got her bill, it was like $20,000 and we were literally dying. Like, oh my goodness, what child could we sell or what car could we, what do we do? How do we get out of this? <laughs> so at the same time though, Sensi, we, we had at that time eight consultants that were doing home parties and we were doing these fairs and shows and our sales were starting to be really awesome. So anyway, the back of my mind, I wanted a game, but I also wanted to trade because I didn't have a lot of money to buy one. So I had seen Orville come and stop by and check on his niece a couple of times and um, I told Kara, I said, I'm starving. I'm going to grab something to eat. And at the end of our row against the wall was a little bench. And so I grabbed some food, went over, sat on the bench, was eating. And I saw Orville come and talk to his niece. And then he came and sat on the other end of the bench. <laughs> and um, that day literally changed my whole life. <laughs> I just feel so grateful. We struck up a conversation and um, I really wanted the game controller. So I was like, okay, he's a guy. Is he going to want a candle? And I asked him, are you married? And he said, yes. And I said, you totally need to take one of these home to your wife. And he said, well, what are they? And I said, the hottest new thing in candles. <laughs> I said, they're wickless and flameless and smokeless. And I'm giving him this big spill about Scentsy. And he came over and I had him smell root beer barrel and I had him smell the red delicious and was telling him how fun they are. And that was how we met. <laughs> Let me just switch. Oh, went back one. So we, um, from there, he came over, he, he, he came and smelled everything. Then he went back and sat on the bench and literally you could just see the wheels turning in his mind. And a few minutes later, he came back and said, so how much would you want to like sell this company? And we we're like, oh, it's brand new. Like it's not for sale, you know? And he said, well, will you partner on a show in Seattle? And we said, sure. So we brought our inventory up to Seattle 
And that was where we first met Deanie. This is a picture of our actual booth out there um, with Deanie when we first met her. And at the Seattle Women's Show, we did really well. We had tons of sales. People loved it. And we would like at the end each night, like go grab dinner. And um, Orville was like, you know what? I think I can help you get this to the next level. And like, he was just getting excited. Deanie was excited. And so this is a picture from um, May 1st. And this was uh, when we actually did it, we did called it a three-way handshake. And these were where we had set up all of the transaction of how it was all going to work. And Orville and Heidi came, they brought their big trailer and um, loaded up all the stuff from the basement and were headed to uh, Boise with Sensi. And I think about that day so often and people will ask me like, oh my heck, like, was that so hard? And how did you, how did you do that? You know? And honestly, when I first met Orville and Heidi, like I felt like they were brothers and sisters. I mean, it was instantly um, trust and love. And um, when they, when they drove down the street with um, all of the inventory, I, I, I shed some tears, <laughs> but I also, it was almost like we were, we had this little baby of Sensi and we were giving it up for adoption and we knew that it would have a much better life. Kara and I, um, we love Sensi. We just didn't really have the means to take it to that next level. And obviously Orville and Heidi were born to to do Sensi. So I'm so proud of them and so grateful for them. I love this quote with, um, from Michael Jordan. Some people want it to happen. Some wish it would happen and others make it happen. And I know, so once we, once we sold Sensi to, to Orville and Heidi, I became a consultant and I literally went on, joined, order a starter kit. Um, I have never had any like, here, here's all these people to go under you, like nothing. Like I started and recruited and moved up the ranks just like everybody else. And so I totally understand. And I want you to know there are going to be ups and downs. There's really good times where I'm just like was on cloud nine. And then there were some times where I'm like, this is hard. Like, who am I going to get to recruit? Who do I, you know, how do I contact people and ups and downs plus things happen in your life where you have ups and downs, but never give up and just keep doing your very best and make it happen. Really, you can do it. And I totally believe in you. So I love this quote. This is um, where Orville and Heidi moved, Sensi, <laughs> and I'm so grateful that they swung for the fence. It's so fun. Um, if you ever get to go to Meridian, you can take a tour and come and see um, where they moved everything and the sheep farm and everything. And literally the beginnings of Sensi, like it should have never succeeded. And what really made it happen is everybody's love and hard work and it's so fun to go there. I would really recommend <laughs> if you ever get the chance. Um, this is a picture of one of the times that we got to go visit at the home office. Um, and then one time where we were um, asked to talk a little bit at one of the um, conventions. And if any of you know me, <laughs> I, I am a talker, but I get so scared to have to like, go in front of people like that. And so um, there are have been a lot of times throughout Sensi where I've had to do things that are definitely out of my comfort zone. And the coolest thing about it is each time you do it, you get braver and you learn and you too can do hard things. And it may, your hard things may be totally different, but um, I believe in you, you can totally do it. <laughs> Um, I think this is the picture that, <laughs> that Edie Ann shared, and I, there's a fun story about this. So this was kind of like your dash to director for Sensi in the very beginning. So we had this 
a little meeting in Salt Lake City and literally not none of us, I don't even think any of us were directors by then. If we were maybe a handful of us, but there were several who weren't quite a director. I don't know. It was kind of just some, some of the top leaders and I'm sure you recognize lots of faces in there. Um, but our, our trainer, her name was Christy and we were at this meeting and Christy pulled me aside and she said, Colette, like, there is something so special about Sensi. And I'm like, you think, you know, I'm like, I know, I just love it so much, but you think, you know, and she said, I see a day where you will have a convention and there will be flags placed all around the room that represent the different countries that Sensi is in. And at that time, this time, I mean, Sensi was so new, was such a baby. I, I was like, no way, like you think, but it really gave me something to dream for, right? Something that I could be like, oh my gosh, wouldn't that be so cool? And um, dreams do come true. And so whatever your dreams are, whatever you could imagine and dream big because there's no limit. But um, I never believed that our little Sensi company our little vision, our little, you know, thing we started in the basement would ever one day have consultants from around the world that were part of it. <laughs> and I literally couldn't be more proud of everybody <laughs> and so grateful that each of you have like believed in our idea and believed in Sensi as a company enough to want to be part of it and to want to become a director and really succeed. And just thank you from the bottom of my heart for being part of something so special as Sensi. <laughs> um, this is, and this may even be outdated. I can't remember if they're all on here, but this is the countries that Sensi is in so far. And um, I'm, I, I am literally blown away. One more. Is there one more that I'm missing? <laughs> Two more or one more? I don't know. <laughs> one more. Okay. <laughs> so I need to update my picture in here, but even this, like I am just beyond so proud of everybody. Um, this is another picture that um, literally like was so inspirational to me. Um, since he had finally moved from the sheep farm um, and I think this is actually the third uh, warehouse where Sensi was moved to, but we were invited for another um, director retreat and it was in the same building, but it was kind of up some stairs and we were, um, you know, in this like office area. And I remember um, going there and there was a window kind of in the back of the office area and we were having our meetings, but I was like, I'm going to go see what's in the window. And I walked over and looked down and saw this, which this now is like teeny tiny compared to what the home office is now. In fact, I think they're adding four more buildings um, at the home office because you guys are killing it and we're just growing and it's so amazing. <laughs> but when I came to the window and saw this and you guys saw my basement, right? So to see this, I was like, oh my heck, this is incredible. And literally blew my mind. And like I said, this isn't even a tiny bit compared to what, what is today. <laughs> this is just one of the buildings at the home office today. And um, how beautiful, literally to go from tiny portion of the basement to the sheep farm to having this and um, literally so proud. I, there's no, I like pinch myself every day. Like, is this really real? Like I just, could not be more proud of everybody. <laughs> um, and this is probably going to be outdated too, but this I think was from about two years ago, maybe. So um, home office on 63 acres, seven buildings. So that's going to be 11 now, um, over 3,000 current Sensi consultants, which were more in, I think, 12 different countries now. There's several distribution centers around the world. Um, employees around the world that are helping run all of these um, distribution, their supply chain, and 
manufacturing and I mean, you name it, lots of employees, which literally when you go to the home office and meet them, they love us as consultants and they have our back and they are doing everything to help us. Um, over 16,000 boxes packed and shipped per day, um, 340,000 bars of wax poured, uh, over eight school buses filled with newly enrolled consultants per day, you guys. This is so awesome. Top 20 on the global 100 direct selling and um, since he named Forbes list of America's 100 most promising companies, we have accomplished so much and I know that we could not have done this without doing it together, which is so fun. And since he has a really unique culture, which I'm sure you're learning. I mean, Edie Ann, if I needed anything, she would help me. Like, how are you doing this? Like we share, we help. It, it's um, if I succeed, you succeed, right? Like we, we love each other and help each other. And that is very unique and super cool. Um, okay, <laughs> this is another thing that literally blew me away when we partnered with Disney, with Walt Disney, which now we are um, the Walt Disney World's official fragrance company, like so proud. But when I saw Mickey Mouse with Scentsy on his foot, I literally could not believe it. Like, we have such an awesome opportunity, you guys, and these products are amazing. And I just, I love it. I am consultant for life and I still do home parties. I still do big shows. I do fundraisers. I am eat, breathe, sleep, sensi. And um, so does my, my girls who are married now do it with me. My husband um, does it with me. Like we have so much fun, but this, this was so, it blew me away. <laughs> um, this is a picture one time when we earned an incentive trip to Hawaii and to be able to come and see, they had taken little white rocks and created our Sensi logo as we pulled into the hotel on the side of the, the hill there as you're coming in and to literally see our Sensi logo on an incentive trip. And I just got back um, from the, the leadership that we just had down in Cabo. And same thing, we're in Cabo. I, it was my first time ever being there. We came down for a welcome dinner and literally the whole side of the building lit up with the Sensi logo. Like seriously amazing. It just, it's been such a fun journey and I'm so proud of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> let's see okay and this is probably one of my uh, most favorite things about Sensi. so um, when we first started Sensi, um, my husband he had been working for the same job for 20 years and um, he in 2009 so the last time that convention was in Salt Lake it was um, Shine 09 and um, he had, I'd been, you know, doing all the sensi. He was still working his full-time job. And he came with me to Shine 09 convention. And after convention, he was like, this is the real deal. Like, this is super cool. And he went into his boss and said, I want to retire because I want to help my wife with her business full-time. And they're like, well, you're too young to retire. And he said, okay, well then I want to resign. <laughs> and um, he and I have been doing Sensi together since 2009. And literally he is my very best friend. And I could not imagine um, having a, a business where it would allow me to work with my very best friend and my kids and be with my kids and be a stay-at-home mom um, and still be able to earn a, an amazing income. So literally, you guys have such an awesome opportunity. And I have seen this over and over where husbands are with their wives. Like it, it is, and even if that's not your goal, whatever your goal is, I know that you can accomplish it. And I love 
how it says, have a dream, believe in it and be willing to work hard. Because if you do, do those things, you will accomplish your goals. I promise you. Um, this is, so this was June of 2006, which is so fun. This was um, one of my actual <laughs> pay stubs from that time. And um, like I said, I totally remember where you're just like cranking as hard as you can. And you're like, I'm not really feeling like my income is matching my level of how hard I'm working, you know, but literally that was June of 2006. And by July of 2009, three years later was when my husband was able to retire and do Sensi full time. So if you keep working hard, it really can happen, I promise. <laughs> And this is a picture of my five girls now. Um, three of them are married. This was my daughter that just got married. I am a grandma and I have two in this picture. And my one daughter was pregnant at the time, but now she has her. So I have three grandbabies. And like I said, three of my girls are um, consultants now. And we have so much fun. And we... We love it. We do open houses that are amazing and they, they just help with everything. It's so fun. And really their young brains and minds are, they help this old, old grandma getting, <laughs> be able to do things to work smarter, not harder. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. Um, okay. This is uh, my last slide, but people will say, how come you're still doing Sensi? And honestly, this is this is my why, and that is you. I love that Ediana is doing this dash to director. Like literally, you have so many people that want to help you succeed and will do whatever they can so that you can keep promoting, move up the rank, reach your goals, reach your dreams. And honestly, I will be part of Sensi until every single person that is a consultant has become what they want through Sensi. And I know that um, literally your dreams can come true um, by being part of Sensi. It really, it isn't just about wax and warmers and making people's homes smell good, even though that is really a huge part and we love the wax and warmers and, and making things smell good. It's really been, and at least it's been this way for me, Sensi has been a vehicle to help me to have the confidence, to help me have the income, to help me have the means to be able to live the life that I want to live and, and love and bless other people. And I have seen it so many times. I've had people come up to me just tears in their eyes and thank you for starting Sensi. Like this is the first time that I haven't had to wonder where I'm going to get the money to pay for my child's Christmas, you know, and, and just, I've heard so many cool stories and that is what keeps us going. Don't, wouldn't you say EDM the same for you? I mean, when you see others succeed and reach their dreams and goals, you just want to keep helping the next person and the next person and you, it, it's literally so fun. So my challenge for each of you, keep doing what she's teaching you. She is amazing. She will help you through. <laughs> and if you do the challenges and work hard as you can, I promise you, you will start seeing bigger paychecks. Things will start succeeding more and more. You will start moving up ranks and, um, yeah, the sky's the limit. So dream big. And if you have any questions for me, I would be happy to answer any questions. But um, yeah, so proud of you. And thank you for letting me come share how Cincy got started. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Colette, I don't know how many times I've heard this story. And every time, every time it just sinks so deep into my soul <laughs> and I just adore it. I adore it. I adore it. And I can't stop listening to it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us tonight. I do want to share some comments. There's no questions. Um, okay. And people, it was actually kind of funny because at some point 
there was nothing coming in at all. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> and somebody <laughs> came back on and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm just so intent intently listening that I'm so enamored by her. And I can't, I don't have, I forgot to interact. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you guys are sweet. <laughs> there, there is a lot of people. First, Terry said, you sound like Heidi. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, and then we have, wow, I love seeing all of this, love hearing the other side of the story. It all started on a bench. I love this. Um, Deanie, and I explained this to them that Deanie, and maybe you can explain this to them as well, because I know that that switched a little bit once, since he started to grow. So Deanie is our direct upline. So she was consultant number one. Can you explain how that kind of shifted a little bit? Yes, yes. So um, we had originally had like eight consultants that, you know, were out selling. And when it switched over, only one of them switched over with us. And so, and at the first, Kara and I were not consultants. We were like, you know what? Yes, take it, you know, run with it. But like, I don't know why the thought didn't cross my mind to join as a consultant. I, I, don't know what I was thinking. So in, in Seattle, when we met um, with Orville and partnered on that show and Dini came, Dini and her husband, Sean, had been really good friends with Heidi and Orville. And Dini um, is the one who actually put together the whole um, like essential certified star you know, superstar, like she put together all of that and being able to like shooting star enhancement kit, like all of, all of how the, the breakdown would work. Cause we had our little consultants, but literally our starter kit was not sustainable. We, they got like all the testers, which were super huge. We gave them like one of every bar. We like, I mean, it was like overwhelming and complicated. And, and so Dini really had an awesome mind for like how to structure everything. And um, she was the first consultant who joined with Orville and Heidi. And um, yeah, so Sensi, as we know it, um, very first consultant. And I'm actually under Dini as well. And she is another one of my heroes. I adore her. And um, yeah, she was very instrumental in setting everything up and helping us come up with um, how all the the starting of Sensi would, would look. So it was super awesome to get to meet her in Seattle. And um, yeah, then now to be on her team, like it's so awesome. So when I joined, um, it was the fall. So Orville and Heidi came and picked everything up on May 1st. And then they launched Sensi as we know it on July 1st of 2004. So that Sensi's actual birthday now. <laughs> and um, then Orville was calling me and saying, hey, there's the fair in Salt Lake. Do you want to work the fair? I'm like, heck yeah. You know, so I was going, I was working shows and everything, but I still wasn't a consultant at that time. And so I was at the fair and I was recruiting people. I actually uh, recruited Kristen Glauser. She was, <laughs> her and Chad came. And um, anyway, I was like, why aren't I a consultant? And so that's when I joined as well. And then literally just started building from there. So yeah, Dini is um, first Sensi consultant. Super cool. You guys are in her downline. She's amazing. And um, I've learned so much for her, from her. She, she would come to these meetings that we would have. And I just love the Sensi spirit and the Sensi um, how everyone's just willing to, to share. And yeah, she, she is a very awesome lady. <laughs> Love her. <laughs> so at this point, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are only two legs and I'm not even really sure if Heidi still has a leg. So Dean uh, and Heidi are the only two legs. And then there's all, all of the superstar directors with you. Yes. So Heidi had a team called the home team. Yep. And um, now with her gone, I think her cute daughter, Emma, is actually the home, representing the home team. She's the superstar director for um, the home team. But yeah, I think the majority of it um, comes through Deanie. Yeah. yeah. 
so fun. So, so, and it goes Dini in my line, Dini, and then Kara, and then me in ours. So yeah. <laughs> so us, it's, it's Dini, then Christine. Okay. And Lisa. And then I think it's Dorothy and then Becca and Jen and me. Wow. That is so awesome. <laughs> I don't think I'm forgetting. So I think that's what it is. We had a picture done one year and oh my gosh, that was awesome. So cool. I love okay. it. Um, okay. Let's see what else we've got here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Love hearing the other side. This wow. is awesome. Love this. I'm so enamored that I'm forgetting to interact. <laughs> um, thank you. Colette, because you were saying how you were so appreciative of us, but there wouldn't be a sensei and we wouldn't be doing what we were doing if it wasn't you. So <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> um, and then she said, yes, the vehicle. Emily said that the vehicle. Aww. I use the word catalyst a lot, that sensei is the catalyst for some pretty amazing things in my life. Right. And it's um, like you said, it's more than wax and warmers. I mean, it is wax and warmers, but it's created this um culture the spirit this community of so much more than just the product and yeah literally a family like i had my girls um one lived in tacoma washington for a year and a half and the other one lived in portland for a year and a half and while they were and then another daughter went to new zealand um they were serving missions but honestly, like my one daughter, she said, oh, we were having such a bad day. And I saw this house that had a car with Sensi logo on the back of the car. And she said, we went and knocked at the door and I told them hi. And you know, that she explained. And this cute girl, she took them out to her garden. They got, she got vegetables from her garden, sent them with my daughter. Like literally we have a family because of Sensi all around the world. And I know that if I ever needed anything, we would help each other. Like it, it is, it really is something really, truly special. And I just feel blessed every day to get to be part of it. <laughs> yeah, that is, it's, it is amazing. I was on TikTok this morning and two or three people were like, oh, I'm Sensi too. I'm like, hi, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> How cute. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Um, Colette, what made you keep going during the hard times? What kept you motivated? Ooh, that is an awesome question because honestly, I do remember a time where, and it was when my paychecks weren't like matching how hard I felt like I was working. And there is that phase and that is right before things take off, I promise you. But um, I remember honestly thinking this, if I hadn't have started Sensi, would I have the courage to stay? And I just remember thinking, okay, this is when I really need to just like relaunch and start, start like brand new, remembering how excited I was when I first joined and why I love Sensi and, you know, why I'm so, you know, wanting to do this. And um, I still do that. I relaunch every catalog. I host my own open house. I literally like went through my phone and every single person that lived close enough to come to my house, not if they've ever bought Scentsy or like, even if they lived close enough that they could come, I sent them an invitation, like come to my open house, see all the new spring stuff. And I do that every catalog. And I think with your question of how did you get over that? Because sometimes even a year ago, I lost my dad to COVID. And before that, in the summer, he had started getting Alzheimer's and we had to like stay with him 24 hours a day and we were taking turns. And so like, literally I could not work on Sensi. Like it, it was taking up every minute that I had. Plus I still have my family at home and my grandbabies and my daughter was living with us at the time. And, you know, there's some times where, and that's the beautiful thing about Sensi is sometimes your family means it has to come first. They mean the most to you, like you need their support. And so sometimes I was like, I got to step away for a minute, but then I'm like, okay, I love it and relaunch. And that is really my advice is just start over again, host your own open house, like just, you know, whatever you can do to, to get the, the ball rolling again. Um, because 
I've seen a lot of people. I had a niece that was actually between me and, and Kristen Glauser. She was actually working the show with me at the fair when we met Kristen. And she decided she was young when she joined, but she was like, you know what? I think I'm going to go to like hygienal, the hygienist school or whatever. And she let her, her team go and, and, um, and Kristen rolled up and literally she has come back several times like, oh my gosh, why, why did I let that go? Like there's so many people that kick themselves. So if you have a hard time and you need a low time for a minute, just don't ever give up, like keep going and relaunch as soon as you are possibly able to, because that's the thing is just giving up. Then, then you never know who that next person or who the person or you is going to recruit and what you could have had. Right. So, um, yeah, I, 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 there have been hard times, but just remember your why, remember your dreams, remember what you want to accomplish and just don't ever give up. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a reminder of the book, Three Feet from Gold. Have you Ooh. ever read that book? No, I yeah. need to, it that's sounds a, like. Brian Tracy, um, and it talks about um, giving up before they got to the gold. So, it, I mean, it's, it's very, um, very linear to that story because you don't, you don't know what's on the next turn. You don't know what's in the next room even, right. you know, to know that somebody might be needing Sensi. For uh, sure. You know, that's sure. something that I shared today was that I feel that I want everybody to experience what I've experienced in Sensi. And so in my eyes, I feel very selfish not to share that with people. And so when you take it in that respect, you can say, you know what, I've got a lot that I can give in this company. So why would you want to give up? so true you know so yeah yes that is so true i yes i that was what i was trying to explain like how much it's blessed me like i know it can bless everybody and i have watched it several times and so and that's what we're here for you know right like with our teams is to help them to see that big picture too because the possibilities are literally endless <laughs> it's true it's true um, thank you. What a beautiful, inspiring story. Love it. Thank you so much, Colette. So amazing. First time I heard the story from you, Colette. <laughs> thank you so much. This is so inspirational. Love Dini's story. Melissa Gratz interviewed her and it was a great interview. And you know, that's, that's the beauty of this business, right? You are getting Colette's version. If you've heard Orville and Heidi talk about their version, Dini has a version. There are many people in the company that have a version. Even Jason has a version, right? Because Jason's been around for a while. Um, right. Dan, same thing. I would love to have Dan share his story with us. I don't know that he actually has. <laughs> um, you know, so it's just, it's so amazing to see the pieces that have come together to create where we are today and know that everybody's story is different and everybody's way of getting here has been different. And that includes you guys watching, you know? Um, somebody said, I'm sorry for your loss. And I was not aware that you lost your dad. And I'm very sorry about that myself. I'm, oh, I'm you're sorry. so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Emily said, relaunch. Love it. Thank you, Colette. Um, and Terry said, that's one of my favorite pictures. I'm not sure what you're, if you're talking about this one or maybe the bench could be, I don't know. Um, but we, at one point we had 14 people on, so. Oh, that's so awesome. I think, I think we've got 20, around 20 in the group. So that's pretty good. They'll come back and Great. watch the replay. Colette, thank you so much for taking time tonight. I love you dearly. I will never forget our moment on the beach when my husband asked your husband what he does for a living. <laughs> What did he say? I'm trying to remember that. We were standing, I think it was in Punta Cana and we had just met for the first time. I'd only been in the business for maybe a year and a half, I think. And it was Ben's first trip and he's standing on the beach and like men do, they kind of went off to the side a little bit. And I hear, <laughs> I hear him go, so uh, Greg, what is it that you do for a living? And Greg kind of looks at her and he goes at him and he goes, well, I work for her. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and Ben was like, oh, duh. <laughs> that's awesome so cute <laughs> yeah. so I remind him of that story I told him that you were coming on today he's like oh is that the, <laughs> is that the Greg I'm like yeah it's the Greg <laughs> oh that's so cute how fun yeah. and I adore you thank you for the opportunity literally it was such an honor to get to come on and you literally are one of my biggest heroes so thank you (laughs) I love you so much thank you thank you thank you and I hope you have a wonderful night and anytime you want to come and play in our our yard you're more than welcome (laughs) okay it's a deal thank you so much and good luck everybody thank you for spending time and yeah go for it I can't wait to meet you at convention come and say hello (laughs) yes Definitely. All right, everyone. Thanks for coming on, spending time. As Becca says, you have to show up to go up. So I love you all and we'll see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.